Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. You thought you were getting rid of me, didn't you, when it came to Chelsea news and talking about that man, Victor Osimhen. Well, I'm going to come back and talk about him again today, but I think the way that I'm going to delve into this video when we do talk about Osimhen might surprise you. So don't just think he's still going on about it, even though we're not going to sign him, we're never going to sign him, blah, blah, blah. Just hold fire. We're going to talk today about Nicholas Jackson. We're going to talk about Osimhen going to Galatasaray. It's mental. And then I'm going to tell you some truths about this one and what I think will happen for Chelsea in relation to this in the future. As well as that, we have sold Angelo Gabriel to Saudi Arabia. We're going to talk today. Kane Chukwemeka and also Cesare Casade. And then I want to really talk today about Nicholas Jackson in today's video. So... Before we do get into anything, I want to say a massive thank you to those of you yesterday that went across to More GBFC. I uploaded my first ever video to More GBFC yesterday. It's a video talking about the carnivore diet that I'm doing. Link to it is in the description. Whilst you're at it also, please do subscribe to this channel and smack a like on this video. It's the international break. It's a dead time of year, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be in your subscription box every single day until Chelsea play football again. So let's start off the news by looking at this here from The Athletic. Chelsea winger Angelo Gabriel has joined Saudi Pro League side Al Nasser in a transfer worth around 23 million euros, about 19.4 million quid. The 19-year-old Brazilian has signed a five-year contract with the Saudi outfit, who were captained by Cristiano Ronaldo 12 months after arriving in West London, I think Angelo is one of those kind of players that we bought in from Brazil. It was one of the many players that we've bought in from that neck of the woods. You've got Andre Santos, you've got Esteval come in, you've got Kendry Pires on the way as well next summer. Not Brazilian, but that part of the world. We knew that not all of these players were going to make it at Chelsea. When you watch Angelo play football, you can see why a club like Saudi Pro League side Al Nasser would offer quite a large sum of money for him. He's an exciting player. He's got a lot of abilities, very raw. And Chelsea here have made profit on this guy. So as much as we might say we don't understand what's going on, we don't know why we are buying all these players, it's pointless. This is why. This is a prime example of how Chelsea will benefit in more ways than one from signing so many young players. And I know what you're going to say, Benson, you're backtracking, you're flip-flopping. Over the course of the summer, I've done my very best to try and understand what's going on here at Chelsea, to think differently, to be more positive, to not spend my whole life not only upset about results, but also upset about just everything Chelsea. So when I see that we've turned a profit, I know it's not eye-watering, mouth-watering profit, but it's a profit nonetheless on Angelo Gabriel by selling him to Al Nasser. And the reality is, look, Esteval, he scored again the other day. The man is outrageous. When I tell, I've said this many times and I'll keep saying it more and more as this season goes on. If we don't sign a marquee player next summer, it's because we've already signed the marquee player. Esteval is something else. And Angelo Gabriel isn't quite at that level. Kendry Pires also absolutely next level when it comes to these young South American talents. Jaden Sancho's come in. We've got Noni. We've got Mudrik. We've got Felix. We've got Nkunku. We've got Jackson. We've got flipping... Who else have I not said here? Pedro Neto. The list goes on. So Angelo pretty much knew that it was never quite going to work at Chelsea, but good luck to him. I've been impressed when I've seen him play, but he's on the way now to Al Nasser. We move. Chelsea midfielder Cesare Cassidy has signed with new agents, Epic Sports. After staying at Chelsea this summer, Cassidy's future will now be managed by new representatives. And this is backed up again from The Athletic with Carney Chukwemeka and Cesare Cassidy staying to be a part of Enzo Maresca's first team squad this season. Going to throw this one out there right now. Kane Chukwemeka, in my opinion, is a better player right now for Chelsea than Kean and Dewsbury Hall. We spent a lot of money on Kean and Dewsbury Hall in the summer. Not like groundbreaking figures, but 25 million is a lot of money to spend on a player when you think that we sold Gallagher for only about 10 million quid more. Chukwemeka, I think, is a quality footballer. I don't understand why Chelsea was so adamant this summer that we wanted to sell him. I think the reality of the situation here is Enzo Maresca's got a lot of other players. Chukwemeka is a high-wage earner. 
and we probably just wanted to sell him so that he wasn't one of the above average wages. I think a lot of what Chelsea have tried to do with the offloading of certain players this summer is try and get players off the books that the players who are on the 60s, the 70 grand a week, don't look and look at them and think, well, I'm playing a lot more than him. He's on 100 bags, so why am I on this? And that is something that we're still going to see. Ben Chilwell is still at the club. There's absolutely no way, I think, that he's going to get anywhere near Enzo Maresca's team, but he's on massive money. So Chelsea, as much as we did a bad job in offloading all of the players this summer, there's still some there. But Chukwemeka, for me, would absolutely be someone that I'd be calling off the bench more so than Dewsbury Hall, from what I've seen so far. And Cesare Cassade, he worked with Enzo Maresca at Leicester last season, and I think in terms of right now, there's a big question mark over Enzo Fernandez. A lot of people are saying Chelsea are a better side when Enzo Fernandez isn't playing. Is he destructive enough as a number six? And I'm not comparing Enzo Fernandez to Cesare Cassade here, but in terms of profile, I think Cassade is a lot bigger. I think as much as Enzo runs around a lot, he's got a big long engine, but he's He's not really quick enough. He doesn't get about fast enough. So maybe Cassidy in a more defensive side, potentially, or for a defense-minded substitution, maybe Cassidy gets more minutes this season. I think it'll be interesting. But Kane Chukwemeka, absolutely do not write this guy off. We might have an abundance of players going forward, particularly wingers. But if we want to use eights or we want to use tens, I would absolutely not write off Chukwemeka. I think he was way too good for Chelsea to even consider selling him to like a Man United or a West Ham. Teams that we're going to be rivaling this season for European places. Absolutely not. He stayed at Chelsea. And let's now talk a little bit here about Victor Osimhen because Osimhen to Galatasaray. Here we go. Deal done and all documents have been approved. Osimhen's release clause will be 75 million euros with Napoli option to extend until 2027. Loan move to Gala until June 2025. 9 to 10 million euro salary covered. No buy option, no obligation. I'm telling you right now, Victor Osimhen earning 7 million euros a year at Chelsea is better financially for him than earning 9 or 10 at Galatasaray. Why is that? The additional opportunities that come by being involved in the Premier League for additional branding that can go with Osimhen, other things in terms of deals that he can get for himself personally outside of Chelsea Football Club, being involved in the Premier League keeps him at that top tier when it comes to your big boot deals, your big like clothing deals, all of the other things that Premier League footballers can do, can work with because they're Premier League footballers and the eyes of the world are on them. Much as I've said all summer, I want Osimhen, I want Osimhen, I want Osimhen. The reality is you find out a lot about the motives of a player when their back is against the wall. And as much as Kalenda, Osimhen's agent, has said he's never going on loan, we're not going to deal with any loans, my player is far more valuable than that, you've ended up going and playing in the eighth league in European football, the eighth best league in Turkey. No disrespect, Galatasaray, massive club in Turkey, incredible fan base, and a huge, huge audience to play in front of every single week. Bigger than Stamford Bridge. But the fact of the matter is here, Osimhen has bitten off more than he can chew. And the way that his agent has operated all summer long with saying how valuable his asset is, no loans, Saudi, and then just going to Galatasaray, proves that it's all about the money. And as much as he would have sat there and rotted on the bench in Naples, Napoli wanted to get rid of him. And yes, he would be paying, I think he'll be getting less money, I think potentially at Galatasaray, or maybe they're actually paying the whole thing. But to talk now about this whole release clause thing, because the 75 million is actually available in January. There's a break clause here in this move to Galatasaray, which to me, look, I don't like this one bit. If I'm looking at Victor Osimhen now as a potential striker and he goes to Galatasaray, but he doesn't really want to be there. So he wants a break clause in January. So it's basically like, I'll go to Galatasaray. I'll gain a load of followers on Instagram or whatever because they're a big club. And then as soon as a decent offer that's better than Galatasaray comes in in Jan, I'm going to be out the door as long as they're willing to pay me all of the money that I wanted. So there's no future for Osimhen in Naples. He signed a little contract extension to protect Napoli so that they can get decent money. 
And the whole summer long, this has been an absolute mess. And in terms of when you think about the way that prestige is valued in football, when you listen to the name Osimhen about a year ago, you're thinking about a player that a lot of clubs would have wanted. Since then, the way that his agent has operated and the way that Napoli have just smacked this ridiculous release clause on him, he has slowly just dwindled down in everyone's estimations when it comes to how good of a player he is and how sought after of a player he is because of the way that the agent has just been publicly out in everything whenever there's a given opportunity. Turns out only Chelsea were interested, PSG were interested, but the money is outrageous. And as much as there is big money in football, people are getting a bit smarter now. It's, got, it's becoming very difficult to just label a player 130 million. And with PSR ruling, particularly in the Premier League, clubs aren't going to play it. Arsenal didn't want to play it. They were offered awesome men at the beginning of the summer. Now, the way I want to go with this here is a lot of you guys have asked me the question, do you want Chelsea to sign Victor Osimhen again in January? And as of right now, my answer to that question is no. I don't want a player who is going to cause this much of a raucous and a ruckus. Imagine if Victor Osimhen comes to Chelsea, signs a five-year deal, has two amazing seasons, which is quite likely, and then Real Madrid start knocking on the door. It's not going to be like Eden Hazard where... He goes and scores and wins us loads of trophies, doesn't kick up a fuss, and then we grant him the move because he deserves it. And he gave everything until the final whistle of that Europa League final for Chelsea. Osimhen and his agent, they don't move like that. They're motivated differently. So the way that I look at this whole thing and the fact that he's gone to Galatasaray on a straight loan, I don't trust the guy. I don't trust him. And if Chelsea do want to go for him in January, I mean, at this point in time, he's got a lot of making up to do in the eyes of myself and many people in the footballing world to gain the respect back on his name that he had. It's not like he wasn't seen as a good player. He was. And when you look here at Nicholas Jackson, I want to take a look here at these stats of Nicholas Jackson because I've included the big chances missed here as well because I want you to see something. And I want to talk about this in a different way than just saying, well, he misses a load of big chances. We should have signed Osimhen. Nicholas Jackson this season could very easily prove a massive point to the footballing world. When you look at last season, 40 matches, 15 goals, 5 assists, 2.3 shots per game, expected goals 0.59 per match, 24 big chances missed. Now that Chelsea have got even more creative players, Nicholas Jackson, in his first season, I think he was, a lot of the times when he'd be in front of goal, he'd be panicking. Now that there are more players around him with the quality to take off that, that onus that's on him to score... I think as much as he already frustrated and kind of pissed me off at the weekend, I'm not going to lie, I think this season, these numbers that you see on the screen go up again. And if Nicholas Jackson can just get even an ounce more clinical, we're talking about a player here that could easily score 20 goals in the season. 24 big chances missed last year. That is insane. It's insane because, A, like, how have you missed that many chances? Cool. I'm going to give you another shot here. But the most important thing is he actually got given the chances in the first place, which to me, as players get older and it's no longer his first season, he's now the Chelsea number nine and he scored again at the weekend too, as well as missing big chance. But I think Nicholas Jackson here can absolutely score enough goals between now and January so that if Osimhen's available in January, we're looking and we're like, see you later, mate. You can go somewhere else. And if he does go somewhere else, we're not bothered because Nicholas Jackson is bagging. And I'm not saying that that's guaranteed to happen, but hopefully it can. And this graphic on the screen now shows you why. To be in a position to miss a big chance means that you get lots of chances. And he's already got 15 goals, so he's not bad, is he? Let's be real. I'm backing Jackson, you know. I'm really backing Nicholas Jackson. And if he doesn't deliver... And it was the wrong thing to not go all in on Osimhen, which right now we don't know. We still don't know if it is going to be or not. After the weekend, it was like, maybe we should have done. But now, there is options. Victor Giorquez, again, at the end of this season, could be available, will probably be available after another great year at Sporting. Benjamin Seshko, he stayed at Leipzig, but he's only growing as a striker. He might be available. And the good thing about these players is Kalenda isn't their agent. Victor Osimhen, mate, I think you've had your chance. You blew it. You asked for too much. 
didn't understand just how unpopular you really were in the transfer window this summer. That's the truth. Players, teams, sorry, don't want to spend money on players like this when they've got agents moving and working like that. And to be quite honest, as much as there's a lot of money in football, it's not being thrown around as willy-nilly as it once was. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. I can't believe he's gone to Galatasaray, but right now, I'm backing this man, Nicholas Jackson. Come on, you blues.